hi everyone welcome this is the second video in the production planning video series that I have uh, created in the first video we have used the Excel solver to determine production quantities you can also call them as lot sizes uh, to minimize the total cost and in this second video what we are going to do is we are going to use uh, the silver meal heuristic to determine the production quantities and the silver meal heuristic is not going to guarantee the best solution for us but it is going to provide a solution a fast solution to large size of problems and uh, <clears throat> We will first understand, uh, try to understand how this heuristic works manually, not using any Excel uh, functions. And then we are going to just uh, go over a VBA. Maybe that's going to be the third video of this series. Okay, so how does the heuristic uh, work? If you look at the Wikipedia page, uh, this is a, you know, some people do not like Wikipedia, but I, I think uh, they have done a pretty good job explaining uh, how this heuristic works in here and it is uh, going to try to determine the production amounts by just looking at the the total average cost if we include one more period and if when you add one more period to a lot size and if the cost increases then we do not add that period and we stop the production lot size for up to that period only so let's take a look at here in the example and let's say in the period one we have a decision to make should we produce only two units or should we produce 14 units or 18 units or 26 units etc okay so here we try to determine this production quantity in the first period and what we do is we just say hey let's just now look at only consider the first period and say that hey I only want to consider the first period production only two what's going to happen to my cost and my cost is going to be only there is not going to be any holding my cost is going to be only forty dollars because I made a production amount so this is average cost up to this period and this is going to be forty and now if I say what is going to be the average cost if I did produce 14 units so instead of just two 14 units how much the average cost is going to be and what's gonna happen now is we're gonna say we will have to pay the $40 okay so that's the $40 and then we also need to pay uh, plus the 12 units that we produce in the first period that we have to keep until the second period and then we have to pay one dollar per unit for those okay and this is going to be our total cost and then we divide that by two periods that we have and now this amount ends up to be $26 and there's a decline in the average cost so that means yes we could consider just producing 14 in the first period let's say if we want to consider one more period and the third period what's going to happen is yes there's going to be a 40 then plus then it is going to be 12 times only one period right we will let's say if we produce 18 units we will have to keep this 12 units for one period until the second period but we will have to keep this four units two periods so we have to then plus four units times 
two units and then times this one dollar so this is a one dollar and I have to also multiply this part by one dollar because it's one it is not going to make any effect but if this is not one then it is going to make some effect on it so 40 plus 12 units for one period and one dollar per period and then four units for two periods and one dollar per period and this is going to be divided by three periods okay so now it also went down to 20 now what I could do is instead of just trying to multiply and add like that I can say hey I divided this thing by three let me just multiply that by three first okay then that's going to be the the cumulative cost up to this period okay and then I'm gonna add the fourth period there eight units times and for we're gonna keep it for three periods times three and then times one dollar per period and then I need to divide that by four and now I see that the cost went up to twenty one dollars and the average cost went up so that means I only need to consider the production of for the first three periods in sufficient enough for the first three periods in the first period so my, my lot size is going to be the sum of this three and that's going to be production amount 18 units then nothing for this period nothing for this period and when it went up to 21 what I do is I am going to change that back to average cost 40 because I am restarting my cycle my production cycle so at this point I am like right at the beginning like here so I will now consider from 40 and then I will say should I only produce 8 or should I produce 23 or should I produce this total then I will uh, go uh, do this calculations one by one until my cost one goes up again and then I restart my cycle again so let's just do this very quick and if this is 40 then what's gonna happen here is uh, it is going to be 40 plus 15 times uh, 1 okay so the 15 is going to just stay for one period and then holding cost is $1 and then I divide it by 2 okay so I will calculate the 2 period so it goes down to 2750 and then I will multiply that by 2 to find this cumulative total and then I'm going to just plus 25 times 2 divided by 3 okay and 25 by times 2 times 1 so I can just refer to that and I see here that it the cost went up again so that means I need to just produce 23 only and nothing and my cost I'm just going to change this back to 40 and I restart my cycle from here and I say for this one it is going to be equal to 40 plus 20 times 1 times 1 divided by 2 30 so it went down I need to consider the third one now and it is going to be this guy times 2 plus 5 times 3 times 1 divided by 3 
Okay, so this is going to be actually two times one. And that's 23.33, so it went down. I need to consider this one, this times three, plus, okay, and 10 times three times one, divided by four, and it went back up again. So that means I need to produce 50, then nothing and nothing, then I need to change it back to 40. And after that, it is going to just take it from here, 40 plus 20 times one times one, divided by two, goes down to 30, and then 30 times two plus five times two times one, divided by three, 23.33. So it went down again. And then I'm going to just look at here, and that's going to be equal to this guy times two, Oh, this is the two and then plus twenty times two times one divided by three and it went back up again so that means I need to produce thirty five zero zero and then finally this is going to be twenty so we are able to find 18, 23, 50, 35, and 20 using this average cost up to idea. And what's gonna happen to the inventory? So the inventory is going to be starting with uh, the production quantity minus the demand, 16, and then inventory plus the production quantity minus the demand is the idea then I could just copy this from the second row and I see that my inventory levels and my production quantities are here and I can just insert a combo chart again inventory levels and production quantities as you look at the first optimization model it was 295 using the solver and the silver meal heuristic also gave us the same 295. Okay, can we do this by just using Excel functions without doing this manually? So I suspect there is going to be an easy way to do this using offset functions and I haven't really paid attention uh, or just spent a lot of time on this to create using Excel functions, but I spent some time to do this using a VBA. So we will, in the third uh, video, what's going to happen is we are going to just implement a VBA approach and we will just find this production quantities using VBA, using the silver meal heuristic so that we could just use this heuristic on larger sizes of problems. And for example, if you have like 365 days, and if you have a production decision every day, then the optimization method may not uh, work fast. The silver mill by hand is going to take too long, but the VBA is just going to be just one click like this and it is going to give you the solution right away. So stay tuned for the third video. Thanks for watching.